Um, I've said that each week. Um, and uh, I was really proud of our team today in all three phases. We, we played uh, a very similar game to like we played against West Virginia. Uh, offensively, we were uh, we were good. Quarterback was good. We were able to rush the ball. Um, defensively, we started out really good, and then they they made some plays. They're going to make some plays. Um, I, I think uh, Mahomes is a is a first round pick, and um, you know he showed that today um, in in different areas. Uh, I suggested to him after the game that he comes out early, and um, if he needs looking for an agent, then. We can find somebody to do the work for him. But uh, he's a nice young man. And uh, when you play a team like that and has a quarterback with that capability, then it's going to be pretty exciting in the end. But I was really proud of our team. Um, I thought Ma uh, Mason matched him. Uh, was really good today. Missed maybe one or two throws. But overall, mentally, uh, was really sharp today. I thought that uh, game plans, uh, in all three phases were good. They got us on a, a fake punt. They made a nice adjustment uh, at halftime. <laughs> and uh, I was surprised they could get it off with the pressure we were putting on them. But uh, they made a nice play there on the fake punt. Um, on the onside kick, we, we called it. We knew it. Ball bounced over our guy's shoulder. But uh, we, we, went, when we were there and in position to make the play. The ball just flopped over his shoulder. Uh, so. Good college football games, a great win for us. Um, I think we stayed healthy, so uh, that's exciting. And uh, want the team to be able to enjoy it tonight, coaches. And then uh, we have to get back to work um, tomorrow. Um, whether you have really good wins like this, or unfortunately, sometimes if you lose Sunday, you got to go back to work. There's just not enough time uh, for us to lose our focus for one day. So uh, happy for the guys, We're ready to go back to work. Talk last week about the uh, formula for coming from behind. No fear, no frustration, no something else I've forgotten. But is there a formula in your mind for why your team's able to win close games like last week, this week, and a lot of other weeks? Well, no fear, no frustration, no fatigue is kind of what we talk about. I like that you're remembering that. That's awesome. Um, I, you know, truthfully, I talked to the players at, about the um, the core values and the accountability we have in our program. Uh, I, I wish I could give you an X and O's or say that I was uh, that I could give uh, a Vince Lombardi pregame speech and halftime speech. I, I think it's the overall concept of of our program. It's um, it's our nutrition. It's uh, it's our sleep method that we used. It's our strength training. The number of hours we're on the field, and I think that. At the end of the games, we're, um, we're somewhat fresh. Now, I know they scored at the end of the fourth quarter, but we got more pressure on him in the fourth quarter than we did in the entire game. And he made three fantastic plays. So what are you going to do? Guy makes great plays. But I thought we were better, and we could have had him stopped. We, we just couldn't get him at the last second. So, Jenny, I'm not sure what it is. I, I, I think there's some, <clears throat> some truth to they believe in themselves. Uh, makes a big difference when when you start to win over a period of years then you feel like you're going to win your mind is much more powerful than the physical part of your body and I believe in that we believe in that so um, they just play hard and, and we're proud of them I told them that in the locker room that it's fun for me to sit back and just cross my arms and watch them play uh, even though the games are exciting and pressure packed it's fun to watch them they, they, they like being around each other. Um, they're good young men. They play hard. And as a coach, what more can you ask for? Nothing. Mike, you guys went to the 3-3-5 three, three, on defense. What was the reasoning and what's the challenge of installing something like that so quick? The risk of, uh, of making a wholesale swap, Kyle, is whether you can make your adjustments. Um, when it was taking place, I was a little uncertain, but I'm not a defensive guy, and uh, I don't micromanage, and I let people do their jobs. They felt like that was best, Glenn and the staff. And so I said, if that's what you guys want and you're comfortable with that, we'll do it. Uh, and I thought they were pretty dang good at it. Um, there were times that we, we needed to make adjustments that were more difficult to make just based on not knowing exactly 
the, the ins and outs of the system, but I thought it was a good move. They had uh, 510 yards or so, 96 plays. And when you look at it, <clears throat> they were 4.8 uh, yards a snap, something like that. I'm sure my math is off a little bit, but I'll be pretty close. And we were um, nine and a half yards a snap. So um, to me, it worked. Um, and uh, I thought it was a good move. Uh, it was risky. But when you play a quarterback that's as good as he is, you're going to have to take some risk. So that's how it got started. And, and fortunately, it worked out well for us. Well, not only that, there were so many young guys playing early. Before I know. It seemed like it's too. That make you nervous watching Yeah, them. yeah, it made me real nervous. Uh, you know, Chad Whitener wasn't able to play. He should be back this week. But so we had uh, Jossie in there. We had Tucker in there. Um, we had a number of guys. 22 was in there. We had a number of young guys that were in the game that haven't really played a lot in key situations during the season. But that's what happens. Uh, when you get in the latter part of the year, you get guys that get um, beat up a little bit. You got to put other ones in. And, and uh, I thought overall they performed well. We missed a few tackles, but for the most part, playing an offense that's in space as much as Tech is, they really tackled pretty well in the, in the big picture. Um, I was pleased with our ability to stop the inside run. That has not been a strong point for us. And um, I thought we were very effective at stopping the inside run today. They, uh, Mike, they onside kicked you. They fake punt. I, because of the way Cliff was going about his business, I, I half expected them to go, to go for two. After so did they, I. Yeah, I'm wondering if, yeah. So did I. Did you get a break? I guess in hindsight you did in the fact that you missed a PAT. I mean, no telling. Um, I, I I thought they would go for two. Um, but again, you – you know, if you look at it from his point of view, uh, two-point conversions are 33% um, effective. You know, uh, if you're in Vegas and 33% says to take a hit, you're not going to take the hit, right? you got to go with it. I'm guessing that probably crossed his mind. He's a very intelligent guy. But um, it would not have surprised me. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Mike, in these close games, how much does it help to have a guy like James Washington scores the big touchdown again, yeah. and then he recovers the onside kick in the end? Yeah, we, uh, when, when we got the big throw over the top, um, it, it gave us a boost. We needed a play. And uh, we needed one last week in Manhattan, and we needed one today, and, and he was able to go make a big play. And then uh, he did a nice job on the onside. Tech has been successful on their onside kicks this year. And uh, I think this was their fourth one they used. And I know they've gotten two. And that's a low percentage. That, that's less than 12% a play. <laughs> so all those things register in your head. But uh, in the end, really good players make good plays. They're, they're making some strides, Mark. They, um, I thought we covered guys up and turned fewer players loose today than we have in the last, well, probably from the start of the season, without watching the tape. The, where, where we improved in this game was we didn't turn guys loose on Mason, and we did a better job of stopping the run in the A gaps and B gaps. We improved in those areas. And, and, and I know there's a lot of plays and there was a lot of fascinating throws and catches, but in the end for us, that's, that's where we won the game. Three rushing touchdowns and over 200 yards rushing. We felt like that we could run the ball. <clears throat> um, sometimes when, over the last couple of years, when teams have played them with Mahomes at quarterback, because of the situation you're in and the score, you can get away from running the ball real quick. Um, I visited with Mason during the week and again before the game about m not trying to do too much. Sometimes when you play them, because of the style of play, you end up getting out of your box. And I thought the play calling on offense and the quarterback's handling of our system, most of what we do is run pass. And I thought his mental approach was, was fantastic. 
just like I said, I thought our defensive schemes, I thought our play calling on defense and the, the chances we took when we took them was fantastic. Didn't always look that way because you can't get that guy down. Sometimes you can't get him down. But overall, I thought it was great. My last drive was mostly Chris Carson mm -hmm. playing heads up and two rushing touchdowns on senior night. How big was that for you? Chris has been terrific for us. And when you can put a guy in at the end of the game, it's 215 pounds and strong. He takes care of the ball and he can run through people. And he had some authority. And um, we were able to block. We blocked him and we had two big runs to end the game. And we all know if you have to punt, then um, you're, you're at risk just from a standpoint of that, uh, I mean, all they needed was a field goal. And so it was very important that we were able to establish a four minute offense and run the ball effectively. And we blocked them. Those runs hit air. So that, that's a stride for you. Know, that's what Mark, you had talked about. I mean, we, we blocked them and our running backs hit air. On that, on that final drive, were you in the middle of them being up there making sure that Chris you know, needed to slide down and not, mm -hmm. not swear there to get the ball back to deck? Right. We wanted to um, get the first down, make them burn their timeouts, and not score. How much of that came from last week at Kansas State where you guys didn't do that? Is that something you even guys even worked on this week? <laughs> no, we didn't work. We we didn't work on that's a it's a valid question nowadays. I mean I mean what's the game coming to where you try not to score? It's a valid question. We did not work on it. We talked about it. Um, I got upset because twenty seven ran out of bounds. All he needed to do was slide and burn another timeout. But he's young, he's trying to do what he can do. He was great in the game. Um and it was interesting when you when you know, we were telling Carson, we want you to get the, th the two and a half yards, but we don't want you to score. So you got two yards. It's kind of like landing a, a, a jet on an aircraft carrier. You got to make sure you get there where you can hook that cable, but don't go off the end. So we were telling him to make sure you get to that, whatever that yard line was, but don't score. <laughs> and he ran right up in there and got it and took a knee. It's pretty awesome, really. I talked a little bit about Zach Steiner. I know he only punted three times today, but it seems like over this season he's just been so solid. You know, I've mentioned to him, and again, I talked about special teams. We, they hit us on the fake punt, and the bunt worked for him. But overall, um, we were good. Our coverage was better today. We had a, one decent return, and, and he's been fantastic. Uh, his target punting was great. I don't know what his numbers were, but I know he downed two of them inside, the, uh, right like the 10-yard line, right? And, and then he boomed one, flipped the field. So he's been good. You know, Zach is uh, – Grogan and Zach, all the snappers and those guys, they're self-motivated. Essentially, they, they take care of themselves. And, you know, football is important to them. They're great young men. Is there, is there part of you at all, Mike, that feels sorry for their kid that misses that extra point? Yes. So it ends up good for you. Mm hmm there shouldn't be any uh, young man that's an amateur athlete or really professional, but professional is different. They're getting paid money. Amateur athletes don't need that pressure. And um, um, he needs to realize there were a lot of plays in that game, right? There's 96 and 66. There's a lot of football plays and the special teams plays. So you're talking, I bet there was close to 200 plays. And there were a lot of other plays. I know you won't see it that way, but uh, – um, yes, because you, you, you don't ever want anybody uh, to shoulder the blame and you don't, want it, you don't ever want anybody to feel like that, um, that they didn't contribute. And so um, I'm sure uh, Cliff will do a great job with him, but um, I, I've been in the game long enough or been in all games long enough to know that you don't ever want a young man to feel that way. Um, and, uh, and I hope he makes them all next week. Good. Thank you.